never stop doing little things for others. Sometimes those little things occupy the biggest part of their heart. A very good morning to one and all present for this session. Indeed, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all on behalf of Kalakrishna Business School and Department of Social Work. I am Ramya, Head, Department of Social Work, Kalakrishna Academy of Business, uh, Kalakrishna Business School and Kalakrishna Academy of Business and Education. So, formally, let me invite our uh, resource person for today, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, Hema V. She is a very good counselor and a very good friend of mine. She has completed her MSc and MPhil in clinical psychology. She is also the registered clinical psychologist and also member in Tamil Nadu Association of Clinical Psychologists, Coimbatore. Mrs. Hema is a RCI approved consultant who works in the area of mental health and well-being since 2016. Uh, she completed her BSc Psychology. Sorry for the question. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are. Uh, so, Mrs. Hema is an RCI approved consultant, clinical psychologist who works in the area of mental health and well being since 2016. She completed her BSc psychology, MSc in applied psychology, and MPhil clinical psychology. Additionally, has done a course on education of children with learning disabilities and basic course on sign language, hypnosis, and graphology. Besides this academic endeavor, she is a resource person and team member with Project CACA under Social Axiom Foundation for conducting sensitization workshop on psychological aspects of child sexual abuse and or bullying for teachers throughout India. She has delivered guest lectures, conducted mental health awareness programs for schools and colleges at various districts in Tamil Nadu and been a, so a resource person at state level programs. She has attended and presented papers in various national and international conferences. She is also an active volunteer at the government school, Coimbatore. She has been awarded as the Young Clinical Psychologist 2020 in the field of mental health by Tamil Nadu Association of Clinical Psychologists. Her areas of interest are clinical and educational settings, uh, counseling and guidance, therapeutic interventions and research. She has her own private clinic and she works work, also works as an independent consultant for various psychiatric, de-addiction and early intervention clinics at Innanana, Coimbatore, Tirpur and Erode. So we are very happy and very uh, pr privileged to have you here, ma'am, for today's session. I welcome you to the session, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also, I would wish to welcome uh, our esteemed uh, uh, participants for this session. And also, I would like to thank our management for giving such an opportunity to conduct a program. So once again, I welcome one and, you, one and all to the session. And ma'am, the session is yours now. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, good morning, everyone. Good I can see uh, so much of uh, faculties from other states, so I think I'm going to stick to English because earlier I thought I'll be using bilingual uh, for better understanding. But since there are staff and participants from other states, I will stick to English itself. So yes, I'm a cl clinical psychologist. I'm from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. So I am. Uh, today we will be seeing about. Uh, sleep hygiene so basically what is sleep hygiene what and all we need to know about that so for uh, going before into sleep hygiene like uh, uh, going before to sleep what should I know about sleep itself okay so what I will do is like I'll start with sleep okay so uh, maybe in between if anyone is feeling sleepy please let me know Okay, so since the topic itself says it's sleep, I will be repeating more uh, frequently the word sleep. 
so it is our mind's mechanism to follow whatever is repeated frequently so when i say all these things repeatedly we tend to get into sleep so i'll start with sleep okay so the basic thing is like uh what today i will be speaking about and what you you might understand these are the things we will be discussing today so why sleep is important uh if i didn't sleep for one day or like uh, maybe if i miss a uh, uh, miss sleep for like two hours or three hours per day what bad is going to happen to me so what will happen and what exactly is nap okay so we we have heard so much about nap like okay you take a nap and then you bring uh, you come back to the session or you take a nap and do these things you will feel active so what exactly that nap is and how much duration we have to take uh, like when we say nap take a nap how long we are uh, authorized to take a nap and why do i get dreams and uh, what is exactly the quality of sleep because sometimes people wonder like yes i slept like uh, yesterday last night i slept around 7 o'clock and today morning i got up around 10 o'clock but still i'm feeling sleepy and tired i don't know why uh, i'm feeling like this so what exactly is the quality of sleep and then how to improve our quality so this the last part how to improve our quality is sleep hygiene okay so i'll be covering most of these uh, um out of uh, syllabus uh, things first and then i'll be going into the content actual syllabus thing so first of all uh, we'll start with myths okay so uh people tend to say so many myths about sleep so these are the frequent uh, myths which we can hear like on everyday basis we will be hearing maybe so i'll start with just some four to five myths and then i'll go back so first one is like sleep is a time when your body and brain shut down for rest and relaxation yes this is a myth this is a this is completely a myth because sleep is the only time where our body and brain will be on full active mode only our conscious mind is taking rest it doesn't mean our inner organs and uh, our brain is taking rest if our brain and inter, uh, internal organs take rest that is not sleep okay so either that is like uh, death or coma stage so this is always a myth so it is not it is not a shutdown for our uh, brain or body it is just a resting mechanism that's it okay so then getting just one hour less sleep per night than needed will not affect uh, on your day uh, daytime functioning so what this means okay usually i'll be sleeping around say 9 o'clock and waking up by 5 o'clock so now i have changed my day daytime schedule maybe because of anything okay that may be a like very serious uh, thing also so i have changed my sleep routine to 10 o'clock so 10 10:30 to morning 5 o'clock i'm having my sleep so will this affect yes this will affect just uh, i have one uh, like uh, just for two days i haven't slept at 9 o'clock what is going bad to happen no it exactly something but we may not be able to observe it or we may not be able to see immediately but actually that one hour uh, extension of time period actually affects our brain cell okay so then the thing is third thing is like your body adjusts quickly to different sleep schedules this is uh, this, this is something we hear when we go for a trip or when we have a function at our celebration at our place or maybe even for the night shift workers so people will say okay one month you work in the night shift and next month you work in the morning shift your body will automatically adjust to your uh, shift how this is happening like what body is like some mechanism or or motor or something uh, just turning all the keys uh, clockwise and anti clockwise we will be able to adjust it no it is not like that our body takes so much time to adapt to our different types of schedule 
so that is why we always say that stick to one particular schedule if you if at all there is no other chance you have to only work on night shift then let it be only night shift not day shift don't take alternative shift uh, shifts this is the uh, this is the reason why they are saying uh, not allowed to take alternative shifts or if at all someone is taking alternative shifts they won't be able to cope up much with their other routines like other physical health or psychological health they won't be able to cope up uh, equal to the the person who is taking a routine like uh, regular shift basis so when we compare regular shift and uh, uh, period of changing shift basis so these persons will definitely have a drawback so that is why our body won't be able to adjust easily or quickly for that matter and the fourth thing is like extra sleep for one night can cure your problems with excessive daytime fatigue so this we will be uh, uh, frequently hearing from maybe teenagers or something right so all five days or all six days complete work and and uh, till uh, a night 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock they will be waking up and they will be doing all the works morning they will have, they have to get up at 5 o'clock 6 o'clock but then on sunday okay tomorrow is sunday let me have a nice sleep so by saturday night 10 o'clock they will be sleeping and sunday morning sorry sunday afternoon 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock they will be getting up which means we tend to think that okay if i have slept a longer time than the other days now my body has restored all my functions properly this is a myth no our body does not function like that okay so it is not a uh, few hours of extra sleep will give you few hours of extra activeness no it is not like that it doesn't function like that okay the fifth thing is like you can make up for lost sleep during the week by sleeping more on the weekends that is what i was explaining now like uh all six days we are working studying doing projects everything and sunday one day we will have a nice sleep without breakfast without lunch and we will have some lunch at 4 o'clock so this is not going to help again this is a myth so for all these statements it is a big no this all these statements are only myth not even a small fact so what actually sleep is so this is the uh, definition i can say or uh, maybe meaning which has given in oxford dictionary of psychology so sleep is a periodic state of muscular relaxation reduced metabolic state again they have said reduced metabolic state not complete shutdown of the metabolic state okay and the suspended consciousness in which a person is largely unresponsive to events in the environment okay so this is the uh, this is these kind of behaviors or activities when it is happening we tend we tend to say that okay that person has fell asleep so this is the exact meaning of the sleep so why we why need we need to sleep so why we need to sleep we can work like 24 hours right what is why it is necessary to sleep and waste some 6 uh, hours or 7 of 7 uh, hours in the uh, 24 hour break or uh, uh, maybe we can see one series not even one episode one season season 1 season 2 and complete it overnight why can't we do that why we need to sleep sleep as such when we say it is a universal behavior so any organism any living organism has a time to take rest so that is universal so according to human we are spending one third of our life so one third of our life is spent just for sleep it doesn't mean we are doing something wrong uh, say for example uh, if a person is living for 60 years and 20 years we are spending only for sleep so that doesn't mean we are doing wrong okay no i am doing wrong oh 20 years i am wasting just on sleep i should not do that let me reduce it to 10 hours then the other 10 hours will be affected as psychologically or physical illness so something like that will be affected that is the reason we need sleep like food air water like all these things sleep is also a 
biological need okay so there is a uh, maybe there is another theory which they say that earlier uh, sleep uh, earlier people slept because uh, we don't have lights or any fire to lit in the night right so to avoid harm to avoid uh, uh, keep out of uh, like keep us out of harm or something at the night people tend to sleep so this is the thing uh, i i read it in some article but uh, okay that we can accept it but to not to a very very long extent sleep is a biological function there is nothing else to do with uh, keep us out of harm or something earlier maybe during the ice age or uh, uh, historical period that might be true but right now no it is very necessary for us for other mechanisms or for other things also like uh whatever we have learned new new skills or new information whatever we have learned very new in the day time the sleep helps us to recall all these things so uh so when we are sleeping we are remembering and learning new things so whatever we have learned in the day time all those things are repeat on repeat mode in the night time so our brain uh, absorbs all these information without any distraction that is why we are we will be able to um, maybe remember so much okay. and the second thing is like uh, energy conservation so since we are not doing we are not doing any muscular activity like uh, using our hands using our legs running walking speaking all these things are all these things are muscular activity where energy is le- leaving our body okay where energy is spent so just to restore all these things just to conserve all these things we need sleep third thing is like our immune system will be on full mode like uh, full active mode during sleep that is the reason when when a person is physically ill so doctor tend to say that right like uh, take some sleeping pills i have prescribed you some sleeping pills you sleep nicely you will be all right in the morning or even our grandparents used to say okay you are not feeling well okay chalo go and sleep for some time and then you will be feeling all right so right so this kind of uh, when when a person is not feeling well or when we have to fight a disease that is the time we need a good quality sleep again i am saying good quality sleep not so long like 24 hour sleep no that is not going to help good quality of sleep is will be helping us so that is why we tend to sleep it is our body mechanism to make us sleep when we are ill so when we are ill we won't be uh, having or we won't be doing any work we will be having work but we won't be doing any work we feel so much tired lethargic to do anything so what we will do okay let me take a sleep and let me take a good sleep and then i will come back to do all these things right yes that is why uh, that is the time where our immune system will be on full active mode so now what is actually the quality of sleep uh, we used to tell right so i was in a deep sleep why you woke me up i was sleeping very deeply see how peacefully this uh, this uh, this one is sleeping so this is very colloquial terms we use right so what actually is this deep sleep what what is happening in the deep sleep or uh, when we will tell we are in deep sleep or when we will tell we had a good nice wow wonderful quality of sleep we i had a good sleep last night that is why i am feeling so energetic in the morning when we will be telling all these things just to understand this i will be speaking of some uh, scientific terms so just if you are able to uh, grasp other meanings yes good but uh, i'll be telling very little information on those scientific terms okay so the first thing we will be uh, speaking about is like circadian rhythm that is called body temperature rhythm uh, so circadian rhythm basically uh, functions on these three things body temperature melatonin and activity level 
so what exactly is this circadian rhythm okay so circadian rhythm means uh, this is a biological clock okay imagine a clock is our in our body so it is a uh, the clock has 24 hours okay so you can see here uh, there is a time uh, there is a time i have given right so 6 am to 6 am so let us keep this so this is a 24 hour clock so this clock functions on all these things so this uh, the battery for the this clock our biological clock is the three three batteries we have one is body temperature so why body temperature is body temperature we everyone knows that we have a uh, like uh, we know that this is our normal body temperature like maybe 36 or 30 to 7 38 right so plus or minus 2 we will be all of us will be having plus or minus 2 because my body temperature differs from your body temperature so this body temperature rhythm how it functions is like from my body temperature plus or minus 2 degrees is the differentiation so when my body temperature goes low reduces minus okay minus 2 degrees then i'll be feeling tired i will be feeling lethargic i don't have mood for anything to do i'll be feeling sleepy okay if my body temperature rises like if my body temperature from 36 to 38 it raises above i'll be feeling so much of actor i'll be feeling like okay now i want to do something okay so that kind of activity i will be feeling so this is the uh, this is the first battery will be doing to our biological clock that is uh, managing temperature so whenever this body temperature is reduced or increased then accordingly our biological clock says okay now it is time for you to sleep so that is what i have given there so from 6 am our our uh, temperature will be slowly increasing right so that is why we will be feeling active in the morning right like uh, uh, once we get up we will be feeling okay let me do all these things but by uh, maybe by this time actually this time 12 to 1 so that is the time where we will be feeling a bit slow or uh, uh, there will be a one small steep in our body temperature so that is the time we will be feeling sleepy right uh, we might have seen in classrooms like uh, uh, till third period students will be very active right the so fourth period just before that lunch oh my god it is very difficult to keep the children active right so that is the time which i was speaking now there is a small uh, valley in the at the 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock time so if at all if we get a chance so we will sleep at that time like at least we we tend to say right i took a nap and i feel fresh so that nap time is that 12 to 1 that that is the nap time range so after that after uh, again 12 o'clock we will be our activity level will be increasing and it, it will be uh, at the highest uh, after 7 after 7 pm then slowly it will reach the peak by 10 pm and slowly it will start decreasing i have said you when our body temperature start decreasing then we will be feeling sleepy right so all those when we are in sleep mode all these body temperature will come to a certain low level and then again the next day the same cycle starts so this is how our body temperature cycle is playing a role in circadian rhythm so this is one battery second battery is melatonin so melatonin is a, is a hormone which is secreted inside our body okay so now let us uh, think um, so you might have heard some kids and all saying who i uh, who told we should sleep only in the night right is there any guidelines only you should sleep in the night you should not sleep in the morning who has who told all these things if uh, if the what historical my period and all if my grandpa grandfather would have uh, uh, slept in the night and worked in the morning then we would have followed the same pattern only why all these things who told we should do all these right 
if you would have heard this and uh, particularly if, uh, if you have any teen uh, teenage girls or boys at home and we are not allowing them to uh, use their mobiles in the night after 10 o'clock they will tell who who asked to uh, restrain the timing as this thing to sleep uh, i am feeling very active only now okay so the the who the who is melatonin now you can say okay who asked me or who guided or who gave the guidelines who passed the law melatonin passed the law melatonin said you should sleep at this time so that person is melatonin okay so the melatonin is the second battery which we are having for our biological clock so what will happen is like uh, this darkness when we are uh, when we are not in the sunlight when when there is no light source for our retina that is for our eye okay when when our eye is not observing any light source then melatonin will be secreted this is how it is functioning this is how our body will function so when there is no light to my eyes then melatonin secretes and melatonin will tell our body to okay now it's time for your sleep just go and sleep okay so this is why uh, some uh, some people call melatonin as vampire hormone because it uh, it is uh, melatonin is active only in the night time so they will call as uh, vampire hormone also so when there is no sunlight melatonin secretes melatonin in turn turns our body tired and then we will be feeling sleepy third thing is activity level third battery is activity level so what will happen is like now i said no melatonin will be uh, secreted only when there is darkness right to combat this or to have a good healthy melatonin secretion we are having this activity level so that is why people tend to uh, say that okay go for an early morning exercise early morning walk go for a jogging in the early morning right so when we are out in the natural sunlight in early mornings so this melatonin will the melatonin secretion will be regular normalized or it will be healthy so so we will be having a routine pattern for this melatonin secretion and then we will be having one good night, good good night sleep okay so then uh okay all these three batteries are there this biological clock is there and this biological clock is functioning on these three batteries when all these three batteries started functioning okay by birth we don't have this biological clock by birth from birth we are we don't have any biological clock in our body that is the time from the period of pregnancy till 2 years of the age is the time where one individual's biological clock is being set okay so you might have seen some kids who who will be very active at uh, midnight 1 o'clock 2 o'clock they will be happily jumping around uh, shouting and screaming all these things they will be doing if you have remembered their behavior at the early age like uh, at 6 months of after birth or 1 year after birth they would have been at the same activity level at that time because of any other cause maybe environmental structure or family structure anything that may have caused but they would have been very active at that moment maybe uh, uh, father might be uh, coming back from work at 10 o'clock or mother might be having some other work and they uh, they will put the child after 10 o'clock so when this happens the child feels active at that time the same thing is carried out when we are adults too that is why we tend to say oh no 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 i am not a morning person i like to do everything at night only morning i'll be feeling very tired very sleepy but night i'll be on full alert mode i'll do anything like till midnight also i can sit and work all these things are trained all these things are set in a way at our from our birth to 2 years of age so after 2 years only it is a regular mechanism for our, our uh, biological clock to run before that it is just on the construction 
a biological clock with these three batteries it is under construction so then what will happen is like uh, just to fight the situation just to uh, tell that okay i don't want to sleep now i i just want to be awake to complete this, this work to do that work now i am taking caffeinated drinks like tea coffee all these things to make because the the substances in that caffeinated drinks will uh, fight with the melatonin fight with our biological clock and tell okay no i don't want to sleep now i want to extend my sleep uh, extend my activity level for some more time so this is what will be happening in the biological clock so this is the sleep cycle which i want to again uh, let you know for a very brief thing so the stage 1 is like uh, the time when we are going for bed so for example uh, if we are going to bed at 9 o'clock so that 9 o'clock is the stage 1 so we will be feeling sleepy but our brain will be active we will be closing our eyes shifting from here and there and we will be uh, tossing around in the bed so that is stage 1 next is like our uh, breathing pattern will be calm normal or uh, our heartbeat slows down our body temperature starts decreasing that is the phase where we will be starting to go into the sleep mode so say for example 9 o'clock i'm going into bed till 9:15 i'll be tossing turning here and there so 9:15 to 10 o'clock is the time where i'll be in stage 2 maybe 10 or 11 o'clock i'll be in stage 2 after this 11 i'll be going to stage 3 and stage 4 so this is where i'll be having my deep sleep if my biological clock with the three batteries has functioned very well and this is the time i be having a good quality sleep so not in stage 1 or stage 2 in stage 3 and stage 4 is the time where i will be having one good quality sleep okay so then comes the stage 5 where we call as we as psychologists we call that stage as rem sleep rapid eye movement sleep okay so there is the, that time is the uh, stage where we will be having dreams okay uh, so our uh, activity brain activity if you compare stage 1 and stage 5 our brain activity will be same okay so that is the pattern so from stage 1 to stage 5 it will take 90 minutes only okay we might have thought okay i have slept for so long wow very good sleep night sleep but actually from stage 1 to stage 5 it takes only one and a half hours 90 minutes like this session okay when you start sleeping from the when i start the session if you start sleeping you will have a good sleep by the end of the session so that is one and a half hours but why we are having 7 to 8 hours or 10 hours of sleep why it is recommended is is this 90 minutes won't be enough for our body okay for our body to get back into normal active functioning mode we need that much cycles so it will be like 1 2 3 4 5 stage and then 2 3 4 5 stage 2 3 4 5 stage so likewise it it will be moving so this is how our sleep pattern will be so stage 3 and stage 4 is the deep sleep that is where our quality of the sleep depends if at all you need a good quality of sleep we have to follow the sleep hygiene techniques along with that 90 minutes time period then we can say okay i had a very good sleep okay so this is the uh, deep sleep principle and these are some recommendations like uh, how much sleep we have to take like sleep duration recommendations by uh, american academy so they have given like newborns how much time how many hours of sleep they have to sleep and the young adults how many uh, teenage girls or teenage boys and old age people how much are so basically for anyone uh, who is um, say above 15 years of age above 15 years 8 to 10 hours of sleep is necessary depending on 
our other characteristics which i will be again telling you so 8 to 10 hours of sleep is necessary for any one any one okay so then nap coming to nap mm. nap is something we take in between uh, heavy work or uh, in between uh, tight schedule or uh, maybe whenever we feel much bit lethargic or bit lazy to do some work we will tell okay like let me take a nap for some time and then i will continue resume the work so this nap duration should be should be must be it has to be no longer than 20 minutes not lesser than 10 minutes so 10 to 20 minutes is the exact time for nap you can sleep for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes but not more than that if it goes beyond that if it goes beyond 30 minutes then you are not taking a nap you are sleeping you are not taking a nap for your activity to gain back your energy you are sleeping so this 10 to 20 minute nap is the best time and best time again uh, depends on the individual like uh, maybe for elder people that has to be 20 to 30 minutes for younger kids like it has to be 20 to 30 minutes for us and depending on other individual factors like our uh, work schedule our stress level of stress our personality our family background the things which we were doing before nap we have to do after nap all these things matter okay so for most people uh the napping uh, napping time should be early in the afternoon early in the afternoon like i already told you uh that 12 to 2 that is the early in the afternoon so that is the best time for nap if you are uh, having some very tight schedule from morning 6 o'clock to 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock just take 20 minutes nap in between and then you can reschedule i mean uh again reboot your system and then you can go back to your schedule from 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock that that is the exact time or that is the thing we can use it for uh, betterment of ourselves after 3 pm if we take a nap that is 10 or 10 minutes or 20 minutes if we take a nap after 3 pm this is the usual time we will be taking a nap right so 1 to 2 o'clock we will have a one good lunch and after 3 to 5 we will have one nap that is not nap 3 to 5 o'clock is sleeping so this sleeping does not give you anything if if we sleep after 3 o'clock in the afternoon we won't be feeling sleepy in the night then again it will affect our biological clock okay so this is about nap and what sleep does to us okay so what it does actually is energy conservation as we were seeing aids memory yes it definitely aids memory say for something uh, like you uh, you can also try it okay it it won't work like uh, okay today i try nothing work no we have to practice it and try it so take one uh, take something to read and you have a read of all these things take notes and like however you read you read it and then take a nap for like 20 minutes 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes and then try to recall all these things you will have a great memory after that and same thing goes with the learning also you will be able to learn faster able to learn it better when you have a nap because Uh, during this nap period or during this sleep period our brain tends to recall all these things and uh, our brain tells okay um, you go there you go here and it will separate all our learning into its categories and put it in place and whenever we want to remember anything we can easily remember so it will be very helpful for our memory and our learning experience and then uh, uh, for better understanding i can say one more example is uh, uh hearing songs if anyone have a habit of uh, hearing songs during the night time okay like uh, putting songs in the night and sleeping uh, without switching off or uh, keeping an alarm like one hour and uh, automatic switch off so something like that and then sleeping if you 
uh, get up in the morning you will be able to remember the lyrics of that song okay but not the song, uh, the lyrics of other songs which you heard earlier or later you won't be able to produce any good lyrics about that but you will be able to identify the lyrics easily so that kind of learning and memory this will be giving you and again uh, reduces stress pain better interpersonal relationships will be there mood will be enhanced all these things causes for disturbed sleep is like there are uh, i have for our understanding i have divided into three parts one is psychological aspects social uh, i mean environmental aspects and other aspects psychologically it might be jet lag work shift night shift morning shift changes in the shift or prior sleep history earlier i was sleeping at this and then i changed into this now i have changed again to this so this kind of variations in the sleep history any bodily pain or stress again diet pattern change in the healthy eating habits too much of physical exercises in the evening or bad mood worse mood worrying and again mental health psychological issues and then the environmental aspects is temperature light noise school time school time will be like uh, 7 o'clock in the morning so i have to get up at 4 o'clock prepare all these things and then the kids and kids have to get up at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock and then run to the school so this kind of school timing or again home environment i have only one room at my home or two rooms at my home uh, like five people are staying there um then one will be working till 11 o'clock other will be sleeping by 7 o'clock so that changes in the home environment again lighting my sister is in 10th standard and my brother is in 12th standard i am in 6th standard i want to sleep at 10 o'clock my brother will be studying till 2 o'clock so light will be there noise will be there temperature room temperature will be different so all these things are environmental aspects then comes the other aspects like physical illness because of uh, older people because of uh, their physical illness they won't be able to sleep much and social stress family stress biological changes anything okay so sleep deprivation effects will be like this this is common effects like it will be affecting all the crucial organs in the body heart liver lungs kidney intestine brain okay so all these things will be affected and um, particularly for younger kids like um, adolescent or college going kids they they will have reduced performance ability or more number of accidents will be having or eating habits will be changed or they have a ten- higher tendency to make bad decision because they didn't sleep well last night so this kind of uh, uh, behaviors might change might be seen so now how to deal about all these things okay uh, now comes the sleep hygiene but there are other uh, different uh, uh, different management in psychological aspect but sleep hygiene is one where anyone can take up anyone can take up and anyone can follow it and make their uh, sleeping pattern as a regular routine but other things will be uh, handled by the profession to uh, what uh, to help you better to support you better so sleep hygiene is uh, nothing uh, is, is just a practice of behavior or habits to uh, to increase our sleep quality and uh, avoid whatever the distractions we will be having so this is the basic sleep hygiene thing so now what we have to do is first oh, we have to obey our biological clock the clock inside us right so we have to keep track of our sleeping patterns so when are we sleeping when i am sleeping when i am feeling sleepy when i am actually going to bed at what time i am getting up in between if at all i am getting up in between then what time i am getting up uh, what time in the morning i am getting up so all these uh, pattern tracking we have to do then we have to maintain a schedule now we have to see the sleep pattern sleep see our uh, check our sleep pattern and schedule a timing okay now usually i am feeling i start feeling sleepy at 8 8:30 but then i am going to sleep at 10 o'clock only so, so now i am going to go to bed at 9:30 let me fix a schedule and then start following so that type of uh, sleep schedule we can do 
and then again be consistent on weekends no tomorrow saturday let me uh, rest tomorrow is sunday today is saturday night saturday night is party night so i have to party till 2 o'clock and sleep in the afternoon after no that has not to be made if you want to party go for party at 7 o'clock come back at 10 o'clock and go to sleep so it has to be very consistent then our sleep pattern will be regular we should not ignore tiredness if at all if if at all i'm uh, tired now if at time i'm feeling tired i have to go and have a nap at least not even sleep if i'm not able to sleep then i have to definitely take a nap and then uh, what uh, regain my energy get enough early morning sunshine spend some time outdoors physically active yes get up early in the morning spend some time with uh, the sun Uh, take as much as vitamin d as possible then our melatonin will be working normally so first thing is like we have to obey our biological clock next thing is like improving our sleeping environment first of all bedroom should be comfortable for people who doesn't have more number of rooms at the house or uh, only two rooms we have and we don't have separate rooms for other things that the bed has to be comfortable okay the mattress has to be comfortable right temperature has to be there if your body is feeling too hot or too cold then again it will disturb your sleep that is why we are using our uh, pillows and uh, uh, bed spreads all these things we are going to cover us all these things. ensure the room is dark room should be dark because only in darkness melatonin will be secreted in a healthy way so room has to be dark no night lamps no uh, tv no mobile no laptops no don't use your bedroom as living room if at all you have so many rooms then you should not use bedroom as living room if i don't have anything please fold your mattress keep it one side then use the other places we should not sit on the mattress and eat sleep i mean sorry eat drink uh, have coffee eat biscuits uh, eat meal in the same mattress or sit and read in the mattress prepare for our upsc exam in the mattress no we should not do all these things on the mattress or inside the bedroom bed is just to sleep so we have to use that purpose only use for that purpose only no clock watching okay it's uh, 11 o'clock i am not feeling sleepy let me study one harry potter series and come back at 12, 2 o'clock in midnight and sleep okay it's 2 o'clock in midnight still i am not feeling let me check my fb scroll down for some time and then sleep. no no clock watching no 1 o'clock 2 o'clock no 1 o'clock 2 o'clock gadgets away from you definitely i am not telling only for radiation for other things also it will affect your sleep it will affect our uh, physical uh, body it will affect our psychological aspect everything it will be affected at least 5 feet at least 3 feet why not 5 feet 3 feet because 3 feet we won't be able to reach right so lying in the bed 3 feet and all we won't be able to reach we have to get up get down go there take the mobile and come back and sit so instead of doing this okay let me try for sleep and some more time so we will be doing that right so at least 3 to 5 feet keep the mobile away from us so then it will be better this is how our environment our sleeping environment our uh, environment uh, around our bed mattress should be there okay then other things are like lifestyle adjustments healthy foods and uh, no heavy meals after 5 pm no caffeinated drinks after 5 pm exercise and physical activity should be there only in the morning as keep it like uh, what keep it as a rule that it has to be only in the morning nothing uh, has to be after 6 o'clock no gym activities after 6 o'clock please okay relax your mind before going to bed no all financial tensions and corona tensions no nothing has to be there before going to your mind or you will be getting only dreams about corona and financial tensions okay so relax your mind keep uh, as much as uh, free 
ओके इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू डू दैट मेक टेक हेल्प फ्रॉम समवन यूज रिलैक्सेशन टेक्निक्स यूज डीप ब्रीदिंग टेक्निक्स टू रिलैक्स योर सेल्फ एंड देन यू कैन गो टू बेड uh regular daily naps you can take like 10 to 15 minutes nap in between like in the afternoon you can take not after 2 pm before 2 pm like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock you can take like 15 minutes break or 20 minutes break and take a nap and then you can start work if it is possible take a warm bath warm bath not hot water bath warm bath before going to bed and then you can go to sleep so these are the few lifestyle adjustments anyone can make so Uh, if at all uh, there is any difficulties then you have to uh, change it accordingly and then avoid please avoid all these things mentally stimulating activities like uh, solving puzzles sitting on the bed and solving puzzles at 10 o'clock because i'm not feeling sleepy it won't make you feel sleepy it won't make you tired it will make your brain more active okay now i can solve any kind of puzzle okay give me the difficulty levels to do ko i will do it now so no mentally challenging or mentally stimulating activities before the bedtime exercise stimulation exercise stimulation when i say exercise stimulation in the light or noise too much of light stimulation or too much of noise disturbance distractions nothing should be there please avoid it as much as possible if you have a habit of uh, uh hearing music before sleep uh keep the music very uh melody music or very uh, nice warm toning music something like that no rap song no beat songs in the night time okay Do, before the bed time yes again avoid all gadgets mobile tv laptops whatever screen you have please avoid all those things at least one hour before not even i'm not saying after 6 o'clock don't use all these things even i will use all these things but at least one hour before if i'm going to bed at 10 o'clock so at least from 9 o'clock please avoid all those things 9 to 10 sit with someone and speak have a good healthy relationship with the family and then you can go back to sleep or you can um, read something very which is uh, not too interesting like thriller novels so no, nothing like that very casual things you can read or you can chant or okay, you can take up um, a relaxation deep breathing exercise something like that which is very light for our mind and also for our body and avoiding caffeinated drinks yes absolutely no coffee no tea after 6 o'clock as i said and then cigarettes and alcohol yes even drug use no after that even sleeping pills sleeping pills are uh, i don't think uh, like even i or my uh, uh, doctors we won't give any sleeping pills unless and until it is very necessary for the patient if the patient is very irritable or very uh, very restless before sleep only then we will be prescribing sleeping pills if not please one day sleeping pill no please don't use even one day that one day will be extended to 10 days and it will be a habit you will start abusing that and you will be addicted to even to that sleeping pill so please avoid sleeping pills also and uh, in case of like physical injuries or in some psychological conditions they will be providing uh, sleeping pills then again um, after a few period of time they will start reducing it we have to adapt it accordingly once the doctors uh, physicians start reducing the sleeping pills we have to adapt accordingly and change our lifestyle to follow the same regular pattern uh, so i i think if if it is very clear or not you can take a snapshot also uh, or you can take click a picture of this if at all you have to fill these 12 uh, situations in scores of 5 4 3 2 1 so 5 is yes always i will be doing these things frequently i will be doing sometimes i will do rarely i will do i won't do this any time so you check all these scores the, the total score will be 65 if it is near to 65 you have to definitely consult a professional and take help for your sleeping problem or sleeping difficulty if it is closer to 65 try changing your lifestyles or try changing your uh, whatever the sleep uh, hygiene uh, techniques i have provided now 
please try to follow that if you need help then you can take a con um, maybe consultation from someone so and then if if there is time then again i will show this if i don't know how much time i have left so i'm moving on to the next thing so yes and a small bit of self advertisement for myself if at all you are having any psychological difficulties or disturbed sleep pattern please contact a professional uh, maybe uh, exactly i'm not saying only contact a clinical psychologist you can even contact a physician why you are not feeling uh, if you have any physical problem if no physical problems present then you can come to a uh, clinical psychologist for better consultation and better managing your sleep in a better way so i hope no one has slept so thank you so much and that is uh, the end of the session i have given my number for your reference if anyone has anything you can always give me a whatsapp or you can always give me a call and ask anything related to psychological aspect so i'll be ready and i'll be free to give a consultation so is there any any discussion or if anything you want to ask the session is open you can ask yes ma'am hey ma'am ma thank you so much for giving so much insights about sleep hygiene mm -hmm. and it was a lot of them have would have known so there are so much things in sleep so uh, participants the session is open for question answers now uh, we can uh, uh, you can post your questions in the chat box so that i can read it out to ma'am Yes, there is one question, ma'am. Uh, yes, what ma is the meaning in nap in Tamil? Okay, Tamil. Kutti to come for a thing. Tell me, ma'am. La, Madhya Nayarathala, when did you get a kutti or to come for a thing? Tell me, ma'am. That is a nap. That is one of the things. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, participants, you can post your uh, views, comments, or even your questions in the chat box. Uh, ma'am, actually, I have a question. Uh, yes. there has been a myth like uh, if you do we sleep in the afternoon we uh, they say that we gain we gain uh, weight so is it true or false that is what i again said ma'am that sleep has to be very consistent so if that sleep is like between 10 to 20 minutes that won't increase your weight again okay and then and there are uh, uh, so many um, factors related to gaining weight Uh, if i am sleeping in the afternoon for 2 hours and then having one big meal like one full tandoori chicken at 9 uh, o'clock in the night then obviously i will be gaining weight uh -huh, uh -huh. yes so there are so many factors related to it uh, that is not exactly completely myth but when other factors environmental as such uh, family personality factors are combined then yes you will obviously gain weight and uh, uh, again i i can say we are not going to sleep in the afternoon when i say sleep that is after 30 minutes like the duration should not exceed 30 minutes if it exceeds only 30 minutes then it is called yes you will uh, you will put on weight if not no. that will uh, uh, give you more energy to work out after that so our uh, calories will be automatically burned oh okay ma'am Yes. And also one more thing, like, uh, is it a uh, good practice to go for a walk after the uh, dinner? After dinner? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can, but not rigorous walking. Like, uh, um, what? Like, uh, like early morning walking. We we will be taking right. So rigorously mm -hmm. walking, like, uh, to burn the calories and sweat. these things yes we this is a very right question and nice question because these things uh, people might say that okay you have some heavy meals at 8 o'clock and go for a walking your calories will be burned then you go to sleep no it doesn't work like that okay so this rigorous walking should not be there in the evening times it has to be only in the morning so you can take a walk very mild or very small walk like uh, just uh instead of sitting at one place and having a conversation with your family if you can go around your uh, uh, maybe your terrace or you can go around your compound and then come back and you can go to that is uh, the walking when i say you should not sweat as such that's it okay. 
because oh. when when we start sweating our body temperature will be increased oh. right we yeah. will be feeling hot so hot. then then that increased temperature will give us more activity instead of tiredness oh okay. so that is why okay oh, thank you ma'am yes ma'am there has been some uh, uh, positive feedback coming up that the session was very interesting and useful that was from karunia priti ma'am another question from suraj gupta sir some mm. people tell yes. that students need to sleep only for 4 hours should students follow this ma'am or is this harmful uh i i think it is harmful only because um four hours sleep won't be uh, necessary or won't be enough for a student sir like when you, when i show that you can check it in the recommendation when i showed you uh at least 7 hours sleep at least at least 7 hours sleep should be there so the actual time for sleep is like 7 or 8 to 10 hours is the best time for any kind of sleep but uh, when it is below that then uh, definitely it will affect but we don't know how it is affecting but it definitely affects the uh, child and um, uh, four hours as such uh, that will definitely affect as such because uh, four hours is only that remember i said the cycle sleep cycle which is like 90 minutes one cycle is 90 minutes so then what happens is like it is like only two cycles the child is having in that two two cycles the child won't be getting enough energy to spend for another 20 hours so that will be again difficult for the child to cope up then what the child will be feeling sleepy in the class or feeling sleepy in the afternoon then again we will say oh no no you are in 10th standard and 12th standard you should not sleep in the afternoon then it is not going to work so for our body to get back or regain our same energy it has to be spent for another full day time it has to be at least for 8 hours at least 7 hours is also good but uh, uh but sleeping less than that i i won't recommend it personally uh old age people they tend to sleep because they have several other reasons physical health they won't be feeling sleepy so other several reasons will be there but for children at least 7 to 8 hours is very compulsory for the minimum minimum is com- very compulsory for them so it oh. is harmful sir yes okay thank you ma'am yes. ashwati ma'am has thank you for the session akila ma'am has told it's very informative session and urmila ma'am has uh, uh, put on her uh, view that uh, 8 to 10 hours sleep is needed for uh, children thank yes. you ma'am and uh, there is a question from sankita ma'am yes ma'am. Uh, in the adult age uh, particularly ladies in what we what way we can maintain health conditions to meet psychological changes yes uh ma'am that is a good question but again it depends on what kind of psychological changes we are undergoing okay because uh, because of uh, financial crisis i will be facing anxiety and because of financial crisis you will be facing depression so for depression and anxiety there has to be alternative ways to cope up so it depends particularly on what psychological changes we are facing and what kind of perception we are having towards the psychological change how i am seeing my anxiety how you are seeing my anxiety differs so that also plays a role and uh, the best thing what ladies can do is like ask a small help from family members only that thing we can do because uh, as a working ladies working women Uh, we have to manage our financial crisis our family support our cooking cleaning washing everything we have to manage so then it will be more stressful for us so if at all we get a small support or help from others that would be better uh, and because of uh, hormonal changes also uh, like um, if uh, if a uh, woman is going through puberty i mean if a girl is going through puberty or if a woman is uh, having a menstrual cycle or if a woman is uh, carrying conceives pregnant 
the given birth newly born baby so all these women will be facing very difficulty to very much difficult to manage their sleep so for each and every one the the management differs okay because our level of hormones is uh, uh, our level of hormones is different for pregnancy period and menstrual cycle period right so accordingly we have to uh, change our pattern of uh, sleep sleeping pattern so that depends ma'am okay thank you yes uh, subhankar said the feedback link will be shared before concluding the session and uh, there is a question from akhila ma'am mm-hmm. uh, sleeping too much of hours is also not advisable right so what mm-hmm. advice you give them to be active and reduce their sleeping time any diet preferred or medicine needed okay uh, medicine no and specifically i am not authorized to uh, suggest any medicines if at all there is any physical cause for uh, the problem then you can take up medicines and then diet uh, as we say uh, ma'am uh, with akila ma'am can understand tamil ma'am yes yes ma'am okay like nama tamil la solluvallengala kaalaiyila saapadu raja maathiri irukano madhya saapadu and ilavarasan maathiri irukano nu solli solluvaangala and the maathiri morning breakfast has to be very good very heavy afternoon lunch should be bit lower than the morning breakfast and evening or night dinner has to be at at least early like 7 to 8 at least the dinner has to be taken and very light the dinner has to be taken like say for example uh, if i am capable of eating seven idlis or uh, five dosas in the morning i have to reduce it to three idlis or four idlis in the night so that is how we have to manage the diet as such and then uh, to change the sleeping pattern we have to change the everyday routine ma'am so say if the kid is uh, uh, studying in the late night so if the kid sits at 6 o'clock and studies till 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock then we have to make the kid to sit at 5 o'clock study till uh, 8 o'clock have dinner go for sleep get up in the morning and re- study the rest or if the child is playing till 10 o'clock ask the child to uh, wake up in the morning and go for play uh, one simple thing we can do is like trying to wake the child early in the morning will help you to control the uh, timing they go for sleep because um, when you start waking up at least like 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning automatically they will be feeling so much active in the morning and slowly their body will conserve all the energy they have and by 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock they will feel tired so just give the dinner and ask them to go to sleep they will happily go and sleep but we have to be very careful uh, we should not provide any gadgets or mobile uh, or even books for that matter even novels reading no nothing if they are feeling tired let them have the dinner and go to sleep that's it so that's why you can manage it ma'am thank you ma'am uh, there is another question from sangeeta ma'am below 15 years age people facing lot of psychological impact and how we can help to them okay so uh, psychological impact uh, intensity differs ma'am so few uh, when when the when the impact or psychological stress is uh, very less and they are able to identify what is the cause for the stress then they themselves can do self management or take up self management techniques and they will be able to come out if the stress is bit stronger and they are not they tried self management skills and they are not able to come up with anything then uh, the next person who is supportive like uh, say for parents teachers or uh, school counselors they can help them to a certain extent if it is too severe and they are facing too much trouble and the symptoms keep increasing not reducing they are not feeling happy at all or they are not feeling normal at all then it is definitely you have to take a professional help so that uh, stages have to be there yeah. uh, we have some positive comments from uh, uh, subhankar sir rajan sir priya durga ma'am and rama ma'am 
upon the, they have they have the, uh, thought that the session was very informative. So thanks for your positive comment. Another question from Ashwati, ma'am. Uh, if nightmares are a sign of poor sleep, or is it harming our good sleep? Yes, definitely. Nightmare is a sign for a poor sleep, uh, whether that it be for a child or for an adult. Dreaming is different, but nightmare is different. Nightmare when you when uh, when we have a nightmare, our complete uh, psychological uh, aspect will be what shattered. Okay, so all our confidence and self esteem will be shattered because of that nightmare, and we will be feeling too much of negativity towards ourselves because of that nightmare. So nightmare is definitely a sign for poor sleep. So we need to identify why they are getting nightmares, or what uh, what is triggering the nightmare, or is there any any other uh, uh, situation the person does not get nightmares, and all these things we have to check for it, and then. uh we can uh what we can uh, change the pattern that is not a matter again dreams is not a poor sign of sleep if you are getting dreams you are having a good sleep okay so dreams is definitely not a poor sign but nightmare is poor sign yes oh thank you ma'am there is another question from charles sir mm -hmm. uh, madam my daughter age 10 sleep at 10:30 pm and wake up around 9 to 10 am how to regulate this okay now sir uh, you know by starting with this like uh, don't uh, tell her anything at 10:30 in the night but you wake her up at 6 o'clock and ask her to come out for some physical activity uh, but you have to join with her because if we tell okay now you get up in the early morning you go for walking or you go for jogging cycling let me sleep no they are not going to do that we have to go along with them okay chalo come now we will go for a walk and come back or we will go for a cycling whatever the kid likes if the if your kid likes to play ball then ask them okay let me go for uh, playing come we i'll take you to the park so something you have to motivate early in the morning like uh, since uh, you said 9 to 10 am uh, starting from uh, today or tomorrow you can start from like 6:37 at least 7:30 is fine So start from seven thirty and give good things to her, whatever she likes. And you, whenever you do something to her, tell her that because you got up at seven thirty, I'm doing you this. If she likes, uh, say, idli or dosa or chapati, make her specially for that and tell her since you got up at seven thirty, I am making. Uh, Mama has made chapati for you. Since you got up at seven thirty, I am taking you here. Since you got up at seven thirty, so if we keep on telling that since you got, since you got up, they will be uh, feeling happy. Okay, since I got up at seven thirty, I am getting all these luxuries for what a life. Then they will try to uh, change their behavior by themselves. But it is all with our hands. Then again, if if you are getting up at seven thirty and asking her to sit and study maths, if she didn't like maths, then no, nothing will change. So we have to provide enough rewards for her. Then slowly ask her to sleep early in the night, like ten thirty, change to ten o'clock, change to nine thirty. So likewise, you can advance it, and again you can advance it from seven thirty to seven six thirty and six. Likewise, you can change it slowly, very slowly, you can change it. Abruptly, if you uh, uh, tomorrow morning you you wake her up at five o'clock, I don't know what will happen, so I can't guarantee your kid's reaction. Thank you, ma'am. And yes, there's ma one final question from Dana, ma'am. Uh, yes. Since uh, this lockdown has come, students have been using more of mobile. So would that affect their sleeping pattern of children? True. Yes, ma'am. It will affect. so yes this is a very common thing which i am also getting for my counseling practices also i am also getting all the same question from all the parents earlier you used to tell don't use mobile don't give mobile to the kids and all but uh, right now they are their school itself is happening only in the mobile now what can we do now since they are using the mobile only or any gadget in that case a laptop or uh, uh, whatever ipad or whatever they are using let them use but equally they have to uh, get a, a, a nice physical exercise or physical activity also 
say for example earlier they were going to school so they are coming back and they will be taking the mobile at 6 o'clock in the hand and they will be using till 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock but what happened is like now even in the morning times they are seeing the mobile right so the 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 sunlight which they were receiving already also have come down now so now what you can do is like instead you can ask them to uh, what increase their level of physical activity outdoor games like at least you can ask them to go sit in the uh, terrace and use some mobile if you are having a class like that is what i am doing now uh, i am sitting in the terrace and i am having a webinar so this is how you can also take a charge like instead of sitting inside a dark room inside one room say sorry where there is no sound no light only seeing mobile only seeing laptop then the radiation will be high then the eye sensitivity will be reduced so instead what we can do is like you can uh, just shift the place to uh, where you can see a natural scenery or like a, a very a bright place bright light and then you can sit there and ask them to read it after the class if the class is for 40 minutes or 45 minutes after the class ask them to uh, give some small eye exercises okay eye exercises you can teach them or just ask them to uh, look uh, look something outside not inside the mobile or inside the house outside the house so for example uh, say if i am sitting in the terrace and i can see a uh, coconut tree like right now i can see a coconut tree so i am telling you that as an example so if i can see a coconut tree you have to see that coconut tree for some time at least 20 seconds to 25 seconds you have to see that and then get back get back to the mobile that you can do along with the eye exercises that will help you to uh, at least maintain or balance the physical effect as well as psychological effect and ask them not to sit so close to the mobile just ask them to go back at least like 2 feet or 5 feet gap then you have you can ask them to check the mobile so likewise we can do some alternatives for that oh thank you ma'am and uh, one more final question okay. like ma'am uh, sometimes mm-hmm. at night we have some nightmares like we are falling off from a we go to a pit and uh, we jerk and get up and yes. maybe after that we are not getting a sleep maybe till the morning also we will not get sleep so what can be done for that ma'am okay so that is not actually nightmare ma'am that is called mm-hmm. sleep drift okay uh-huh. so uh, that anyone will have that is the time where we are going into deep sleep mm-hmm. okay Yes. so remember the stage 1 2 3 4 which i told you so from stage 2 to stage 3 because stage 3 is the deep sleep stage so when we are moving from stage 2 to stage 3 if some uh, distraction happens in our environment even a small door crackling sound or uh, uh, breeze from window any sound so clinging sound or some even our anklet sounds or our bangle sounds if something happens our mind thinks that okay it's time to get up so now they will we will have a drift okay then we will be waking up but actually it is a uh, it is something to identify that they are going into deeper sleep okay that is not a nightmare so not to worry about it if at all you are not able to sleep after that drift try some relaxation deep breathing techniques like uh, uh, inhale and hold it for at least 2 seconds or 3 seconds and then exhale inhale you have to do it for 3 seconds like inhale 1 2 3 so till 3 seconds you have to inhale and then exhale it for another 3 seconds so so this will help you to go back to the sleep thank you thank you so much yes ma'am and uh, again one more question tangamesh sir has asked for any eye exercise okay eye exercise are very simple sir you can uh, even google it uh, or you in youtube also you can check so few eye exercise which you can casually do is like moving the eyeballs up and down left and right and circles like like this if i don't know whether you will be able to see me or not like you have to move your eyeballs like this so concentrate 
uh, on your chin first down and then on your left uh, right, right corner then above your head then right left corner and then back to chin so something like that if you do it is called circular movement circular movement so you can use that and then up and down movements left and right movements these kind of small things you can do so you can check it in google also so, so many exercises will be given but we won't be able to do all these exercises so these are the one or two simple exercises i am telling which i am also using so i am telling you Uh, thank you thank you ma'am yes, so ma thank you mayandi sir and dr shankar sir for your uh, valuable positive comments so with this we end the question and answer session and uh, formally again ma hi ma'am ma thank you so much for the wonderful session and insights about sleep uh, hygiene and thank you for taking such an insightful session thank you thank so you, much ma'am ma uh and also extend my uh, heartfelt thanks to the management our vice president sir Vice Chancellor Sir, Registrar Sir, and also uh, uh, Kalkina Business School Deputy Dean Dr. Vijay Ma'am for giving this opportunity to organize such an thoughtful uh, webinar on sleep hygiene. And also, I like to thank the uh, participants of this session for uh, your patient listening and your uh, for being with us throughout the session. And uh, once again, thank you all for this uh, uh, wonderful session. and uh, this is time for feedback i'm just posting the feedback link here so this uh, you can just uh, fill it and the uh, i'll keep this uh, open for another 10 minutes the feedback link is being posted i'll keep uh, this for another 10 minutes so that you can fill the form and get your certificate so once again thank you all for your participation thank you so much thank you so much for uh, asking me to be a resource person in this and thank you kalasingam academy for uh, uh, arranging such a good opportunity and to meet wonderful persons in the thing in the session and it was there was nice uh, uh, like questions also that is why i can come up with the good answers so thank you for the questions also on the participants thank you so much and uh, ma'am please uh, share the feedback for me also it will be very definitely yes uh, yes uh, definitely i will do that yeah and uh, for the participants please add some constructive feedback if there is any so that uh, i will be able to change it and uh, do, uh, i mean give better for the next time so thank you so Hope much there thank would be so very, very positive uh, feedback from me ma'am uh, so <laughs> yes ma'am that's why I, uh, because just now i'm checking the chat box there are so many positive feedback so i just wanted to tell them if there is any constructive feedback also please let me know sure sure definitely i'll do yes thank you yes, thank you so much thank you so much ma'am so i'll leave after